I hope you are all awesome and well and excited for this year and what the Lord is has in stock for all of us. You know something that is so amazing about our God? He's always doing something new. And you know what? If you get excited and expectant, the Lord always does and brings something new. So for this new season, I pray and I hope you are excited for what the Lord is doing. I pray and hope that your spirit is expectant for this year and what the Lord is bringing forth and is bringing to birth in this year of 2023. I am so excited. You can never outdo our God. You can never outdo our Father. He always has such amazing things in stock. So as we are going to start praying today, um, the message today, uh, let us start with the prayer. Father, we thank you. We bless you for this time you have given us. Come and have your way. Come and lead. Come and guide. Holy Spirit, come and penetrate through our hearts. Oh God, come and teach us. Only you can teach us Holy Spirit. So we give you our hearts. We give you every sense of us. And we ask you that you may open our eyes, our eyes to understand the things that you want to speak to us today. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen and awesome amen. So I, today I just have a message that I feel laid on my spirit and I've named it, uh, Don't Sell Your, birth, your Birthright. Don't Sell your birthright. Now, when we talk about things that, um, birthrights, a birthright is something that is a little bit sensitive and you'll find so many people talking about this, you know, I, I, you were born specifically in a certain family and you have a right to certain things in that family. So I want more to bring in our spiritual birthrights as children of God who have received this specific grace as sons and daughters of God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And I don't know why, but I felt the Holy Spirit challenging me for this new season that is coming to just lay this message to your heart. And for those that the Lord is speaking to, I pray that the Lord will guide you in some areas that as he wants to bring revelation. I just felt the Holy Spirit just bring this message to my heart and say so many, the enemy, if he can't get you, is going to try and make you sell your birthright in so many ways that is going to try to do this but today i want to bring i don't want to say a warning but i want to say a caution that watch out the enemy is all about your birthright he's all about what you have received in jesus christ faking it and trying to show you something that looks better but it is even worse so that you can sell what is originally yours and that blessing that is originally yours the lord wants you to understand that that is your blessing you don't have to buy it it has already been given to you so don't sell your birthright for anything. Now, one thing that I've written here, a statement that I want to bring out, some scriptures that I want us to look at, some um, showing us people who sold their birthright, but I pray that the Lord can bring revelation and, and relate these scriptures to us and where we are at this particular time. Don't sell your birthright for a seasonal challenge to make you make lasting decisions that are going to alter your destiny, your life, and that of the next generations. The enemy is looking for that. He is looking for you to sell your birthright. You know, and he's going to bring any challenge, going to push you on every side so that you can sell what is originally yours. I want to say to you that be careful when seasonal challenges come, when seasonal problems come, do not sell in. Okay, to make lasting decisions that are going to bring such grave consequences to alter your destiny to alter the blessings of the next generation and to alter even your life and the joy and the peace and the blessings that God has given you through your birthright. A birthright, you don't have to work for it. It has already been given to you through Jesus Christ. And I see so many times the lies of the enemy whereby the enemy has brought up false prophets, you know, saying to people, you to get this, 
bring this amount of money to get this do this but child of god i want to remind you that the the bible warns about these false prophets you as a child of god have to ground yourself and know what are your rights as a child of god you have rights by birth and i'm talking about spiritual rights that god has given you that should not be bought that the enemy must not lie to you that in order to have the thing you have to do this to get it so it is something that i feel the holy spirit was saying to me that i need to bring teaching me this area so strongly to learn that the enemy is going to bring bets and he's going to put us in a trap so that we can actually sell our birthright to him when we look at this we can see something that i want to bring as an example that is very 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 uh i think very well known in genesis uh we can see genesis chapter 2 verse 16 to 17 let us look at god giving these instructions um, to man now, when it go to verse 16, it says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree, now let's look at what brought the fall of man. Of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat. Now, before I start there, I just want to give you a background about this. The Lord God, when he created every creation he created, it is only the one creation, man, that he gave authority. Man it was the only creation that he gave authority so much authority in the beginning when we are created we were given authority now you can see god telling adam to even name you know we can see the lord giving authority to man so god had already given us those rights those blessings in the beginning were ours in the beginning now you have to realize that we are so honored and privileged above all creation that we were given this. Now, in verses 16, you can see, and the Lord gives just this one commandment to man. And it says, seeing of every tree of the garden that you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it. For in the day that you eat thereof, you will surely die. You know, God gives this command to man and you know what it is the only command that god gave from apart from all the other it's the only thing that god told man not to eat and we can see that man has been given so much authority now let's see what happens after that now let's skip and go to genesis chapter 3 verses uh chapter 3 verses 1 to verses uh, 7. Uh, please stand with me there. I'm going to read all of them. Now the serpent was more stubble than any other beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, He has God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Now we can see how the enemy tries to take the birthright away from us number one temptation okay so you have to understand when the enemy comes to tempt he comes with deceit when you read verse one he has just brought deceit let's go to verse two and the woman said unto the serpent we may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden that's the instruction that she knew verse three but of the tree of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden god has said you shall not eat of it neither shall you touch it lest you die remember the lord god has already told man that he will surely die so we go to verse 4 and the serpent said unto the woman you shall not surely die you see that the enemy has come here with deceit and all that the enemy wants to take from man is our right or our birthright that we have been given by god our authority that god had given us the blessings that god had given us now i want us to reflect and look at our life and how many times the enemy comes and you know what is so amazing he always comes with a question 
He always comes with that question and says to you, did God say? You know, I have seen so many times this triste lie of the enemy. He even shows you people in the church, Christians who are doing what you are doing or what you are refusing to do. And he says, how come they are doing it? Aren't they the same as you? You know, I remember when I gave my life to Christ and, you know, gave my life to Christ and um, at the university hype, life was so hype and everything was so hype. I know so many people can say it is not that maybe for you, but for my time, <laughs> at that time, I was like a free bird. I had come from a boarding school and everything and I was like really like a free bird and there we were so I gave my life to Christ at that time the climax of you know life and the, you you could have as many parties as you wanted and that is what we dreamt about <laughs> when we were in in high school and all this we used to dream I can have all the parties I want I can have all the boys I want, you know, all these things. I can I can go out all night. I can even miss lectures. Now at this particular time in my first year, I give my life to Christ. And when I gave my life to Christ, I read the word of God and I, I was taught so well and I had just given my life to Christ. And one thing that I knew and I made a decision not to do is not to copy other people's a way of living to understand that a child of God lives differently and one of the decisions I made was not to have sex before marriage but I want to say to you the enemy came in every corner the enemy came and showed me so many Christians that were saying it openly you know and I was so you know tempted I, but then I remembered you know what but this is what the word of God has said. But the enemy can twist it a bit and say to you, you will not surely die. And this is what he said to Eve. You will not surely die. Now, when we go on, we can see here the enemy saying to uh, Eve, he goes on um, to verse 5 and says, For God does, does know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and you shall be as a God, knowing good and evil. There is trysting. Now look at verse 6. And when the woman saw, I want you to pull out that thing she saw. Now, when the enemy tempts and you take time to stop and think, and it means the woman saw, she looked again at this tree. Okay. She was supposed to walk away immediately and trust that the Lord had the best intentions for her. That is the one thing I got to understand. God has the best intentions for me. God will not desire evil for me. Now the woman looks so that the tree was good for food. And that is how he comes in. Before we sell our birthright, we think about these things. You, you, you start thinking about it you become obsessed about it and you start to see you know what man it is it looks good i don't think it will be evil i don't think it will it will be bad and you know what the bible says and it was pleasant to our eyes i want to bring in another thing how the enemy makes us as children of god to sell our birthrights number two the lusts the last when this woman looks, when Eve looks at this tree, she desires, the desires, lust, the desires of the flesh. Now the enemy will bring forth the lusts of these temporary things so that you can lust after them. So that you know what? You will not be able to experience the true blessings that come from obeying the word of God. I want to encourage you, child of God, obey the word of God. The Lord has the best intentions. The Lord loves you. No one will love you more than God. Not even that boyfriend, not even that partner that you have, your husband or your wife. No one, even your mom, your dad will never love you more than God. I want to say to you to that. So watch out for those short last desires that the enemy comes and advertises 
those loans, you know, you can take that loan at the expense of your faith. Go for that loan, you know. It is a quicker, faster way. Why are you waiting? Just go for it. Why are you still waiting for him to first take you to the altar to marry you? What is so hard? The enemy is going to bring and advertise and is going to tempt you over and over and again. Now, that is where the trap was when the woman saw she desired and she wanted and she saw the bible says that it was she saw it was pleasant to the eyes a tree to be desired to make one wise do you see that she starts to see that this tree definitely might make one wise not remember that at the beginning it was death Okay, now for her, she looks at it as it will make her wise. So she took of the fruit thereof, ate it, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did also eat it. And the Bible says in verse 7, And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they uh, sold fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. In verse 7, you can see, that they have sold the glory of God. They have sold the glory of God for something that was temporary, something that looks desirable, but it was a trap from the enemy for an everlasting blessing. And I want to say to you, child of God, be watchful. So what do we learn from these verses that I've just talked about? The enemy is going to come in as a trap to make you sell your birthright through temptations and that comes from deceit confession of our lips with her own confession she herself saw that this fruit will be good do not allow with the confession of your lips to say something that is going to sell you against your faith in god Speak only that which edifies. Speak only that which is the word of God and hold on to your faith. Temporary comfort. The enemy will come through the desires of temporary comfort. To have temporary comfort, to be comforted temporarily, the enemy will come in there and he will show you something that is temporary, so something that is everlasting. For if he is shown something that is temporary and he sells it an Adam for an everlasting glory, glory, the presence of their father, they sold it for the relationship that they had with God. Something amazing when you read the following verses. You see now they used to enjoy the presence of God, but now God is the one looking for them. And they hear him coming, they dread the presence of God. And the presence of God is the glory that God had dressed man with. By disobedience, they sold their birthright. Avoid entering into partnerships with something ungodly or someone ungodly. We can see here by Eve listening to this cunning serpent. To you, it might not look like she actually entered into a partnership. By her believing, staying there as the serpent was speaking to her, she was slowly entering into a, temp a, a, a partnership, listening to this serpent, going in and having such a conversation with the serpent. There are some things I want to say to you, child of God, that you don't even have to sit there and start having an argument or even wasting your energy and time on. You know flat out they are against the word of God. You don't have to sit there, explain yourself why you are not doing how the world is doing it, why you believe ABCD as long as the word of God says it, that is where it ends. You do not have to justify yourself with the world. You do not have to justify yourself even with the enemy. Flee, child of God. 
run because you know that the moment you start listening the moment you start listening is the moment you are going to become like Eve you are going now to look and start thinking you know what this might actually not be so bad and that is where you slowly give in and that is where you slowly sell what God has given you treasures in the spirit what God has given you treasures that no one else can give you let me tell you something the treasures and the blessing that God has given even us the temporary things not even money not even governments can give you those kinds of treasures avoid distractions of life if the enemy cannot get you the enemy is going to cause distraction and detours he's going to detour he's going to cause distraction uh, distractions He's going to disrupt you, disrupt you, distract you, and he's going to even cause details so that he can get you. And you have to understand that for you to keep yourself away from the enemy stealing what God has given you, that Jesus had to die for, do not allow yourself to be distracted by the enemy. How do you not allow yourself to be distracted by the enemy? Be disciplined. Be disciplined in the things of God. Be disciplined. Your private time with God, your one-on-one -on -one time with God, prioritize, have things that are in order. Order your life. God first, family second. Start prioritizing your life. The enemy will not find a way to penetrate through to distract you so that he can steal from you, so that he can steal your family from you, he can steal your marriage from you, so that he can steal from you what God has given you, so that he can steal from you peace, the joy, so that he can steal from you the blessing, the financial blessings that God has given you. Now, I want us to see, as I was saying to you, how to avoid falling into the trap of the enemy in this situation. Number one, stay in the spirit. These are the pointers that I've written down. Stay in the spirit. When we look at uh, Matthew chapter four, and I'm gonna quickly go there because I want to bring you another part opposed to what we see in Genesis chapter two and Genesis chapter three. We can see Jesus staying in the spirit. And this is how Jesus overcame the temptation that the enemy had brought. Now, it is not only us saying that Eve maybe was cornered, but we can see even Jesus was in a place whereby he was tempted. But I want you to say opposed to how Eve acted and opposed to how they acted. I want you to see how Jesus actually acted when he was being tempted. Number one, it says here in verse 1, Then was Jesus led by the Spirit. Be led by the Spirit of God. The moment you are led by the Spirit of God, I am telling you something, it's going to be very difficult for the enemy to come in and tempt you and for you to find yourself selling that which is your birthright. And when we see this, we can see Something when we talk about staying in the spirit, it is staying in close relationship with God in prayer and the word of God. When you read these verses, you can see Jesus bringing out words. He goes into the wilderness, the Bible says, to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards hungry and when the tempter came to him he said if you are the son of god command that these stones can be made bread again here we can see the same thing the enemy comes with a question you know twisting the word of god verse 4 and jesus answered and said it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now, when we look at this, we can see Jesus grounded and answering the devil with the word of God. Now, what do I want to say to you, child of God? Stay in the spirit. Seek God immediately when faced by a challenge for his guidance, for his wisdom, for the knowledge, 
for understanding seek god immediately when you the enemy comes to you or when a challenge comes your way so that you don't find yourself in the situation that we saw esau selling his birthright to jacob and you can read that also in genesis chapter 25 verse 29 to 31 and we can see how esau sold his birthright to Jacob just because of a challenge that had come his way. So seek God immediately. Sometimes the solution will not be found immediately in that second, but seek the Lord, seek for his guidance, seek for his wisdom. I am telling you, child of God, every single time that I have sought the Lord, he has always come through. I might, he might not have come through how I wanted him to come through. But he has always come through. Sometimes he has given me peace. You know, when I really maybe at that particular time actually wanted money. But the Lord knew what I wanted. The Lord knows what you want. Seek him immediately through the word of God and through prayer. Stay in close fellowship with others who are like-minded. Strong Christians who have the same faith with you. Stay in close fellowship with them the enemy likes to separate us put us aside and be able to take us out remember the enemy will find it so hard when we are united together when you are fellowshipping with christians fellow christians the enemy will find it very hard to pick you out why because we can feed on each other you know iron sharpens iron so remember that and watch out for that flee immediately do not linger do not stay there like what we saw eve did stay there lingered don't wait don't think just flee the word of god says that when we are in this situation we should flee away from temptation and away from the enemy don't linger flee immediately don't even think about it flee and run away from the enemy renew your mind to be in line with the word of god we can see jesus here when you read matthew chapter 4 and you can read it again and again jesus was not just quoting the word of god he had renewed his mind and when he speaks and, uh, and, you know, counter-attacks the enemy with the temptation is giving or the questions is giving. We can see that Jesus had renewed his mind. Renew your mind with the word of God. Pull down every argument that the enemy is putting in your mind. Subject them to the word of God. Subject them to the word of God. Tell that argument. Pull it down. Put it down as the word of, of God says that we subject those arguments unto the word of God. So pull those arguments down with the word of God and renew your mind constantly with the word of God. As we are talking about the word of God, stay in the word of God. Study the word of God. Be the word of God. Let me tell you something. The moment you dwell in the word of God, you will see how you will stay in the spirit. And the more you yield to the Spirit, the more we are going to be able to see the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We will see love. We will see endurance. Because so many times we can be faced with these opposing uh, forces. And if we have not been able to yield to the Holy Spirit or even a challenge comes your way, you are going to find yourself crumbling and falling down very fast the word of god is our foundation it is our firm rock foundation on which we stand stay in that word and i want to say to you when you stay in the word of god obey the word of god obey it and i want to say to you something that i've written down there is a true blessing as a child of god don't allow the enemy to make you sell your real blessing for crumbs. Don't allow the enemy to make you sell what God has given you and that which Jesus has prayed, has, has paid such a heavy price for. It has costed him. He has paid for you. Don't allow the enemy to make you sell yourself out. 
stand, be patient, endure. It is coming, but the blessing that God is going to give you, it is going to be an everlasting blessing. So as we go into 2023, as we are starting off 2023, we are not saying challenges are not going to come. They are going to come. But child of God, I want to say to you, do not sell in. Do not sell your birthright. Do not sell your blessings for the lies of the enemy. Father, we thank you. We bless you, mighty Lord. May you have your way. May you continue to give us wisdom. May you carry us, Holy Spirit. And may you help us to stand strong in you and to finish well. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.